Now, the importance of community was brought home during the COVID pandemic, when people reassessed their place in the world. As digital adoption accelerates, as there is an opportunity to redefine financial services through these strengthened communities. Well, community banking has long been touted as a better alternative, but has lacked the scalability of big bank lenders. Well, to learn more about this, we can speak to Drew Graham. Now, Drew is co-founder and CEO of Radish, which is a new lending as a service fintech. Drew, it's good to see you here on Cyboss. Welcome. Thank you. Now, look, you were on the perfect pitch stage on Wednesday. Yes. Presenting Radish. What was the reaction? The reaction was wonderful. Uh, the understanding from the judges of what it was that we were trying to do was great. I felt a little bit awkward coming to a conference that is celebrating a particular thing and then standing on stage and asking people to question whether the particular thing is part of the problem. But we are a B2B2C lender, and this is predominantly like a B2B transactional banking conference. So given all of those challenges, uh, I think it went very well. Speaking of challenges, I'd like to ask how revive those advantages of community banking in the internet era? Yes, if you think about the origins of community banking, they're very much based around particular industries and particular geographies. There was, uh, it's called agglomeration, when a particular set of industries emerge over a particular geography. Um, and then the internet came along and technology came along and we kind of sacrificed that context at the altar of scale and technology. The community system that exists now in the internet era is a lot more ephemeral. It's not necessarily, we don't define ourselves by what we do or where we live anymore. We define ourselves by the life transitions that we're going through at a particular time. We define ourselves in different ways, which can be natively digital very often. And so what Radish is doing is taking that idea of community and focusing on it in the way that exists natively in the digital. I'm glad you've used this phrase, phrase digitally native lending. Yes. Very simple terms, what is it? And the flip side really isn't lending already digital. That's one of the reasons why we're at Cybos, looking at the ways that we can actually improve that. Indeed, I think there's a difference between digitized and digital. Uh, Payments today is natively digital. I can set up a company and 15 minutes on Stripe's website, I can be accepting payments because my credit card is as fungible as the money in your bank account. The concept of doing that for lending just doesn't exist yet. If I decide I'm selling something that requires some complex financing, then this is going to take me weeks, months, maybe even years to be able to have the mechanisms in place to be able to understand the context so that I can finance that particular thing for you. If I'm selling you something and you're just paying for it straight away, then what matters is what you're buying and what matters is how you're going to pay for it and when you're going to get it. If it's something that actually requires me to give you a loan over a long period of time, I need to know why you want it and I need to know who you are. And the why and the who is what we've kind of lost with this, uh, with this mission for scale over everything else. Mm. So what does practically digital lending kind of look like in someone's day-to-day -day life? So the last time anybody watching this or either of you needed to um, have something in your life that was materially important to you, but is something that you necessarily didn't have the cash for at that particular moment, I would almost guarantee that the process between figuring out what you needed and why, figuring out where you were getting it from, and figuring out how you were going to pay for it were completely separate. Like you do a research phase and then you end up doing a purchase phase and then you end up doing a financing phase. And the research phase is going to happen within your community. The purchase phase is going to happen with a particular retailer. And the financing phase is going to happen with the bank. But when you join all of that up together, it's actually one journey that you go through. And digitally native lending looks like working with a particular merchant, working with a person you're reaching out to to give you the thing that you need and blending that into a single journey. And how does that differ from what banks are doing today? Banks have always, yeah, it's too strong. Banks consider themselves to be the provider of the financing. And they like to dabble in those other two stages, the research stage and they dabble in the purchase stage. But payments got taken away from banks when the Collison Brothers started Stripe, I would argue. And banks kind of retreated into the idea that they're providing the financing. And so you can go to a bank and say, I'd like to borrow some money. But the bank doesn't really care why you want the money. And they don't really care who you are beyond what your credit rating looks like. Whereas banks aren't embedding that into the journey that the people go through before they actually walk into the front door or the digital front door. 
So here's the important question. Why aren't banks and lenders doing this already? It's a combination of technology, of organisational structure, of regulation. Banks have emerged to do very particular things and have got very rigid structures and think about risk in very particular ways. And changing a way that a bank thinks about risk is, I would argue, actually impossible without starting from risk frameworks and understanding sources of capital from first principles. And so these large, multi-multi-billion dollar organizations who make very large profit margins and lots of people make a lot of money out of them just aren't incentivized to ask the question of whether there's a better way or not. I mean, at Cybos, there's so much talk about ecosystems. Yes. And it's not necessarily universal. It depends on where you operate. The important thing of building Radish is that we're not trying to reinvent everything all at once. There's one particular aspect which we've spoken about that we're trying to fix, but we still require organizations who understand uh, capital better than us, organizations that understand distribution better than us, organizations that understand an aspect of credit and underwriting better than us. So Radish kind of pulls the platform, pulls together the people to do the underwriting, the people who can provide the capital, the people who are doing the distribution, and glues it all together into a, a seamless experience. Okay, Drew, we're going to have to leave it there, but thank you so much for thank joining us much. on Cybos TV. That was Drew Graham, co-founder and CEO of Radish. <laughs>